Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Bud Danker, uh, president of Penske Corporation, and it's great to have you all here today on this historic day here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the beginning of a new era for the Speedway and for the sport of IndyCar. I appreciate all the distinguished guests that are here today and also our, uh, our friends from the media that have joined us here this morning, along with all of those that have joined us also on the conference line. And of course, we can't forget the fans and the members of the racing community that are watching through live stream on IMS and IndyCar.com. A press release detailing today's important announcement is being distributed as we speak. It will be available also online and hard copies available for all you in this room today. Carl Fisher first had the vision to build the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in 1909. Some 18 years later, Eddie Rickenbacker purchased the Speedway before Tony Holman and Holman and Company became the owners of the world's most famous racetrack in 1945. The Holman George and the Holman and Company families have been the stewards of this great speedway for 70 years and more. And today, we're excited to announce there will be a fourth owner-operator of this historic venue, this historic, iconic facility that hosts some of the biggest races on the planet, including the Brickyard 400 and, of course, the world's largest motorsport event, the Indianapolis 500-mile race. The board of directors of the Hallman Company have entered into an agreement to be acquired by Penske Corporation. Under the agreement, Penske Entertainment, a subsidiary of Penske Corp, will acquire all the principal assets of Holman & Company, including the Indianapolis, 500, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the NTT IndyCar Series, and the, N, and the uh, IMS Productions. The acquisition will close following the receipt of applicable government approvals and under, other standard conditions. Today, we welcome key principals from both Holman and & Company and Penske Corporation here to discuss this historic announcement. Tony George, Chairman of Holman & Company, Mark Miles, President and CEO of Holman & Company, and Roger Penske, Founder of Penske Corporation. We'll hear from each of our guests this morning, and well, then we'll open up for questions from the media. So Tony, I'll start with you. This is a very historic day for the Speedway, the NTT IndyCar Series, IMS Productions in particular, Holman and Company and your family. Can you provide us some insight on the decision to sell the Holman and Company and its iconic assets and what led you to Roger Penske and Penske Corporation? Thank you, Bud, and thank you all for being here. Um, I would like to recognize my um, family that's down front. Um, all of them are here, but sp specifically my sister Josie, my sister Kathy, and my sister Nancy, who are on the board of directors, as well as uh, I see Jack Snyder here and John Ackerman. And I don't know if I see any others, but uh, I want to thank them for being here and for their support in this decision. It was, um, it was an important decision for our family, especially at this time. Over the course of business uh, through the years, we've always looked at strategic opportunities, things we might be able to do to grow and expand our capabilities here. Um, we're a 169, almost 170-year-old business, and we've been in a lot of different businesses during that time. We've been distillers, we've been brewers, we've been grocers, we've been produce, um, canned goods, just about everything, financials, um, utilities. But in 1945, in fact, about two weeks, uh, 10 days from now, it'll be 74 years since that uh, last uh, transition of stewardship took place. And, and we're very proud to have uh, come together uh, the last several months, I think, um, to make some very important decisions. Uh, one, about an iconic asset that the family cares very deeply about as well, and that's Clabber Grill baking powder. But, but now this one is extra special because, uh, to all of us because we've all grown up around it. Um, Nancy and I, anyway, we, we came home from the hospital to a, a home just right, right down the street here. So we've literally grown up around it. 
our kids and grandkids have done the same. So bittersweet, but very exciting for us because we know that we're passing the torch to um, an individual who has created an organization that is not only dynamic, but it's ideally suited, I think, to take over this stewardship. Um, a corporation that, that is family involved, um, much like ours, um, but with a track record that is really um, without compare. So we're very excited to um, be in a place where you know, our process took us to a point where uh, we as a family all agreed we needed to have a conversation with Roger Penske. And um, so I approached him at, at um, the final race of the season, not wanting to distract from the task at hand, which was uh, bringing home another championship. But I wanted to you know, wish him well on the grid. And I just simply said I'd like to meet with him and talk about stewardship. He got a very serious look on his face. <laughs> and uh, I followed up after he, he clinched this championship with a, an email and then another email the next morning. And we set it up. I invited Mark to join us for that meeting. And, and um, you know, kudos to both organizations who, who worked very closely together, uh, very quickly. Um, it was a pretty easy, um, not easy by any means, but, 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 but this isn't their first rodeo, or your first rodeo, your first rodeo. So they, they were able to execute around um, diligence very quickly. And uh, it led to a, uh, an announcement that miraculously, not many things are kept un under wraps around here, but this was fairly well contained and we were able to really, I think, um, present this to the world this morning. So that's kind of the way it came about. And, and we're just very thankful for the opportunity to be here today and, and to you know, work, work towards this closing. Very excited about welcoming the Penske Corporation, Penske Entertainment uh, as new, new uh, corporate citizens in the Tony, We're very thankful to be here as well with you today, too, and you and your family. Thank you. Um, Mark, I'll ask you a question now. And, um, you know, we've seen some great positive growth and momentum from the series over the last several years. The, of course, the Indy 500-mile race has seen crowds of 300,000-plus year after year after year. And uh, some great action and competitive nature of what's happening on the speedway or across North America. With today's announcement and the new era that's beginning, uh, how can that momentum continue and move forward? in your eyes with the Penske Corporation. Thanks, bud. Thanks, everybody, for being here. And thank you, Tony, for all your support over the years and, and your comments today. Um, I, I know I speak for everybody. I think we have 260 people or so that work uh, either at, at the Speedway or IndyCar or IMS Productions. And it, it's fair to say that every day, people understood that whatever progress we were making was based on what had come before us. So before we say anything about uh, the last few years, we just want to recognize that it, it was really everything that came before us that gave us the opportunity to, uh, to try to, to make more progress and achieve more growth. And, and I think uh, Tony and, and perhaps other family members will continue to be involved. So I think that's, that's really important. Th this is, uh, we will make great progress because to me, this is an absolute hand in glove fit. Roger's background in racing and, and the this, this superb effectiveness of uh, everybody that, that works in the Penske Corporation is pretty well known to everybody. And as was said, he didn't need a lot of diligence on the history of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway or, uh, or IndyCar um, to, to, to know us. And so the most important thing, I think, in this transaction in making these arrangements was the convergence of, of uh, really the transition from the phenomenal heritage we come from and the understanding of that with Roger to what is possible going forward. We are very proud of what's happened over the last several years. Um, and f many of you are from Indianapolis. You know here that we had this unbelievable opportunity with the 100th running in 2016. 
I think the community really responded to that. Um, and that gave us the chance to build from there. And so we're still staying at a really good place in terms of attendance and, uh, and, and all that uh, in terms of fan engagement here. And we've tried to be innovative in the events we bring here, and I think that will probably continue. Um, IndyCar, we, we're just so proud of. Um, it's probably been a little bit more of an up and down history over the, the longer term, but there's no question we have great momentum now. Every fan metric shows growth. We've kept our traditional longtime fans, and we're growing the fan base and adding younger fans all the time. Uh, it's without a doubt, in our minds, the best form, most exciting form of racing on the planet. And uh, with Roger and, and, and Penske Entertainment uh, as our leaders now, uh, we see nothing but more of that growth. And I don't want to forget IMS Productions. It's a great company that um, has uh, turned, has earned a reputation of being great storytellers. So they create a lot of content, not just for racing, but for other customers as well. And uh, of course, they are the, the nerve center for the television productions that allows IndyCar racing and everything from the 500 to reach so many people around the world. So the shorter answer to your question is, we have a parent now that appreciates the history of the past, the, the history and the past, knows our business inside and out, gets things done. I love that Roger has said more often than not that he cares about the talent, the people around him and how hard they work, how much we can get done. And I know that everybody at, at the Holman & Company has felt the same way for some time and looks forward to working for you, Roger. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mark. And know that we have your interests in mind and keeping that momentum going, believe us. Um, Roger, to you now, uh, you and your race teams have had an incredible history, a, a legacy here at the Speedway and, of course, in the NTT IndyCar Series. Can you describe what this moment means to you personally and professionally as you sit here today? Well, I, I think to everyone that's uh, here today and uh, around the world listening to this uh, iconic event, uh, I really have to wind back to 1951 when my dad brought me here and I was 14 years old. And I guess at that point, the bug of motor racing, you know, got in my blood, I'd have to say. And to think about uh, what it's meant to our company uh, the brand that we've been able to build, it's interesting. I talked to Mario Andretti today and talked to A.J. Foyt. And we all agreed that, uh, you know, what the Indianapolis 500 has meant to us as, as individuals and as company, as, and certainly as our company. And I think that uh, what it really says that in the United States of America, that if you work hard and you're committed and you have a great group of people, you get great success. So today, I hope my dad's looking down at me and looking at this group and say, son, you did a good job. So I've got a big commitment here to take over, to, certainly as the steward of this great organization and what's been done here in the past for so many decades. And, you know, it's my commitment to the, the Holman family, uh, to the fact that you'd select us as an opportunity to take on this uh, investment. Uh, it, it's amazing. And I just want to thank Tony and everyone else that's been involved in this. Certainly, Mark, you've got a great team. Uh, we don't have a gymnasium full of people to bring here. When we buy a business, we take, we look at the people. And the great thing is we've sh rubbed shoulders with many of the people here over the years. So we've seen this organization grow. And uh, I certainly think that uh, uh, sorry, IMS Productions does a great job. Uh, you know, what's happened today uh, with, with the media partners and uh, there's just no question that we have the opportunity to grow, and the IRL will be, you know, one of the greatest series as we go forward. So I'm humbled today to say that, and I want to thank uh, Tony, you again, and the family for this opportunity. And, Mark, uh, I look forward to continuing to work with your team uh, in the future. Thank you, Roger. And um, before we open up to the uh, questions from the media here in the room, I want to remind those in the telephone, we have a lot of folks I understand uh, live on us that will have questions as well to do star one, star one, to, uh, to get in the queue for your, uh, your questions. So uh, with that, I'll uh, open it up to an orderly fashion here with the media. If you can state your name and, and uh, where you're from, and uh, there's a microphone being passed around. Roger, Chris Woodley from CBS4 here in town. Why is this important for you to take over this place, and are there some changes in mind that you'd like to make? 
Well, I think we, we look at uh, businesses that we invest in where we have domain knowledge. And I think the fact that we've been coming to this track for almost 50 years and seeing the growth of the series and understand the technology, and it's also a great business opportunity for us to, to grow it to the next level. And we look around, uh, you know, this thousand acres, and we say, can this be the entertainment really capital, not only the racing capital of the world, but the entertainment capital of the world in Indiana, and uh, be able to support, you know, the state, the governor, uh, the region, the city, uh, the town of uh, Speedway, and continue to grow it. So, uh, you know, we're going to invest capital. We know the economic benefit today that this race brings to the region is amazing, and we want to grow that. It's important to us. Fritz Frommeyer with Finnish Motorsport Magazine. Uh, part of the Speedway is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Nonprofit Foundation and the museum. And what are your plans moving forward with, with that part of the Speedway? Well, every time I get to go to the museum and get to see all the uh, wonderful pieces of art there, it's, it's amazing. And uh, I can assure you that as part of our discussion, uh, we're going to support the museum the same way the Holman family has done in the past. Uh, good morning. This question is for Tony Day first from RTV6 here in Indianapolis. 1945, uh, Tony took over this place. Great history, obviously, with this family. How difficult, ultimately, was this decision for you and the family? Well, it's obviously emotional, emotionally difficult, um, hence the choking up. But. Um, you know, we all love it, and we all care deeply for it. And, you know, I think we all realize that as, as a family and as an organization, we probably had taken it as far as we can. I think that, um, you know, Rogers, his structure, his resources, his, his uh, capabilities uh, that he demonstrates is, is only going to take this to another level. And so that's what we're all about. We're supporting that continued you know, elevating this, this asset and, um, you, know, uh, you know, staking a new claim on, on, on its future. So, um, you know, we, we um, with emotion, are, are happy to, to be here today. Roger, Bob Kravitz with The Athletic. We've talked about the momentum. How do you build on the momentum? What are some of your, what's on your wish list for the, let's say the first 30 to 60 days? Well, I think, uh, you know, what I plan to do tomorrow, ironically, is to uh, walk the entire facility uh, and strategically sit down with the existing team and, and get their top 10. I always like to work from a top 10 and see the things that we can do to make it uh, uh, fan friendly. Uh, certainly from a competitive perspective, uh, uh, I'm planning to really step down from being a, a strategist on the pit box. You won't see me there on race day. Uh, I think I've got a bigger job to do now is to try to see how we can build a series to the next level. Uh, it would be nice to bring another uh, car manufacturer in. I know Jay Fry is working on that. Can we uh, have someone else come in to join the series? I think we, we look at the Speedway itself, the investment with the hundred million or the hundred million dollars that was put in uh, a few years ago before the uh, the hundredth, I think you've seen a, a tremendous change. And we want to add capability. Is there more fan zones? Uh, what can we use this for? Can we run a 24-hour race here? Can we run a Formula One race here? You know, what are the things that we can do? This is a great asset. And uh, you know, once the tradition had been broken, and adding the NASCAR race, which obviously. We're going to get behind that in a big way because for 27 years they've run here. So I look at all of these across the board to see, you know, what can we do. This, this business is not broken. This is a great business. And the leadership team that's been here has done an outstanding job. And what we want to do is be a support tool. You know, we bought Michigan Speedway in 1973. It was bankrupt. You know, we built California. You know, we're running the Grand Prix or pre help present the Grand Prix in Detroit. So this is in our DNA. And I think that uh, with input from the media, 
uh, certainly input from our sponsor partners uh, and, and all the teams. Uh, I had a chance to talk to most of the teams today, the principals, and we're looking forward to getting together with the car owners and seeing what we can do to make IndyCar even stronger. And I think that's something that would be a priority for me. Mr. Pesky, Eric Berman, WIBC Radio. What can fans expect that will be different in the 2020 race and then going forward over the long term? Well, uh, that, that's an all-encompassing question. Uh, number one, I want to be sure that we're as good as we've been, and I'm going to count on this team here. You remember, I'm going to be the new guy in town, so we're going to take those plans and uh, see if we can add anything to it that makes, that makes it better. But I think it, you don't build a business overnight. This didn't get to 300000 you know, in, in three or four years, so we have to be rational, you know, on our investment. But, uh, you know, we're interested in the economic development, uh, you know, in the community. Uh, the Hoosiers that support this, uh, you know, all over the state, you know, want to see this become st and still be the iconic race of the world. So we're going to do this a step at a time. And I think that uh, we've got here probably the next 60 days. We're hoping to close this very early January based on all the, the regulatory things we go through. And I think at that time, we'll have had a chance to talk to all the leadership here and get some good input because, you know, this is, this is obviously a chance for us just to add our support and our shoulder to make this better. As we're passing the mic, let's take a call now on, from our folks that are online. Let's uh, start with uh, Marshall Pruitt, Marshall from uh, Racer Magazine. Can you hear us, Marshall? Hopefully so. Congratulations, everyone. Roger. What do you envision in terms of a management structure being put in place? I know you mentioned that you aren't overflowing with uh, personnel so far, but what do you envision as a other combined Penske Corporation, uh, IMS IndyCar fusion of management? And how far do you and Mark Miles and company wander down that road? Well, I think I said it earlier, we have no intention of changing the management teams uh, that are in place today. Uh, and certainly we'll have a board which we'll announce uh, at the time of the final closing of the transaction. And uh, we hope to have a diverse group of people on there that know the business and can support the business and take us to the next step. So, you know, that's going to be part of our plan. And we also, just to uh, put it in perspective, you know, we've offered uh, uh, the Holman family members, if they'd like to have an interest uh, in the company, that we will look at that during the now and but we get to the end of the, the closing. Thank Marshall, follow-up question also, I understand. Uh, just another one quickly on looking at the investments needed, Roger. You've always been one who you've never spent freely for the sake of spending. You've always said, show me a business reason to invest, and I'll take that under consideration. Are there areas that you see now, maybe less with IMS, but more the IndyCar series, where you believe some infusion of funding would actually help move the series higher, faster, sooner, something to get it back to some semblance of what it once was? Well, let's look at TV ratings are up, attendance is up, social media is up. We've got a NBC as our partner on not only the network, but, uh, you know, also, uh, you know, on cable. Uh, it couldn't be better. The competition, you know it yourself, coming down to three or four drivers being able to win the championship at the last race. I think the racing product is excellent. And the fact that we have uh, short ovals, big ovals, the Indy 500, then you have street courses and permanent road courses, I think the venues are well balanced. Look, it would be great to have another venue uh, here in the U.S. This is, this is a North American sport, including, obviously, Canada. I think what we have to do is be sure that we can get people that want to invest in the series with us. And uh, to me, the product is good. I think the officiating, Jay Fry, you know, Kyle Novak, uh, certainly Ari Landyke and Max Pappas, you know, from the stewards, that process is the best it's been. So I think what we have to do is maintain our d data equity and through social media and getting the sponsorships. I think when we sit down with the team owners and give them a chance, to, and we'd be very transparent with them, and we'll let them add, see what they think how we can add to this sport, because this has got to be done just not by us. It's got to be done as a team effort. And to me, you can't walk in here today and make an announcement like this. We've been 
wide open here for the last six weeks to try to get to this finish line. And I think now what I want to step back with our team and with Mark's team and, and be able to look at the things that they see because they've been much closer to it than I am. I can tell you what the garage area looks like and what pit one or pit two looks like. And I like being in the uh, winner's circle. I do know where that looks like. <laughs> so uh, that I do know. But uh, I can't tell you that, uh, that we'll, we'll have, I think, uh, as I say, a top ten by the time we, we hopefully get to uh, the closing at, uh, at the end of the year. We'll go to another question here in the audience, and then we'll go to Bruce Martin online. Next question in the audience. Mr. Penske, you talked about an investment. Sorry, sir. You talked about an investment. Everybody likes to know details. You want to share the purchase price with us? Well, you know, we're a private company, and the Holman Company is private. Uh, we don't really discuss uh, those at, at this time. We'll go to uh, Bruce Martin now on, uh, online. NBC Sports, Bruce. Yes, uh, Bruce Martin, NBCSports.com. Uh, one question for Mr. Penske, one question for Mr. George. Um, Kensky Entertainment is going to be a new corp company that you create. Are, are you going to be spending more time in Indianapolis, maybe uh, from the Penske Corporation up in Detroit? Or, uh, I mean, how is the logistics of that going to work? And also, I have a question for Mr. George as a follow up. Well, you can be sure that with an investment like this, that I'll be here the, other than the month of May for sure. <laughs> Bruce, follow up question? And for Ms. Yes, for Mr. George, when you think of the Holman family legacy that has existed within the state of Indiana for 150 years or more, and just the historic perspective of what the family has really meant for the state of Indiana, I mean, how can you even begin to put that into uh, perspective? Well, I can't say that I. I no, for sure, but it's, you know, it's an honor. It's, it's close to 170, and just this past, I don't know, 18 months or so, I had the opportunity, which I never took the time to do before, but that was to read uh, a historical transcript of sorts. It, it is really a book on the first 100 years of Holman and Company, and that really shed a lot of that opened my eyes to a lot that I didn't know. Some of my sisters knew some of that lore and whatnot, but I, I wasn't really familiar with it. So, you know, I, I, that's been kind of baking um, for the last 18 months or so. But, you know, I, it is somewhat bittersweet, I said, because, you know, the 170-year-old company, as we know it, is coming to an end. But, um, you know, we're very, very proud. We feel like we're going to continue to, to be a part of it. You know, everybody who comes here has their own story, and uh, their the, the memories and and the, the accomplishments that that make it special for them. So you know, we're we're just fortunate that 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 our family and our family business has had a 73-year run of being part of it and being a steward, and we we continue to. Uh, be grateful for the opportunity that we may have going forward, and uh, I, for one, intend to take advantage of it. And we'll be here supporting the events with uh, teams. You know, maybe our little team can expand to, you know, do other things, which we're going to need to do. And so, if Roger has a 24-hour race, <laughs> by George, I think we're going to try and be here. <laughs> we may have to look at getting into uh, NASCAR too, but. Um, you know, those are all things. I think once, once, once I think the momentum continues to swell here, um, you know, I think it's going to raise all boats. So, so hopefully we'll have that opportunity to continue to be involved and, and um, you know, work right alongside Roger and his group and all of the teams and fans and media that come here to enjoy it. We've got a couple extra NASCAR cars for you, too, Tony. <laughs> Let's go to uh, a And was Roger. Let's go to a member of the yeah, audience here, and, uh, and then we'll go to Jenna Fryer from Associated Press. I'm Brock Brown from the town of Speedway. We live here. We're going to miss you, Tony and family. We've been talking about you for 100 years, so we have to change our conversation now. 
But uh, Mr. Pinsky, do you have any message to the town of Speedway in anticipation of us welcoming you with open arms to this area? Well, um, you know, obviously, uh, town of Speedway has been very important, uh, surrounded this iconic track for all the entire time it's been here. And uh, uh, what I would say that uh, the growth and the ability to see what's happened there just is a is just part of what we see the momentum is around the track. So I take my hat off to the city fathers and the people that are there. I, of course, represent Allison in one of our businesses. So I've been coming here a long time. And uh, to see the growth and what's going on just makes me even feel better about the opportunities we have here. So I would say to the, the citizens and the people that live there and work there that uh, we're excited to be a partner. <coughs> Let's go to uh, Jenna Fryer with Associated Press, who's online. Jenna? Hi, um, I have a, a two-part question for Roger. Um, one of the few things that's come up that people are questioning on this is conflict of interest. Um, I, noted that, I, I noticed you said you're going to step down from the pit stand. Um, how will it work with a team owner running both the Speedway and the Series? Well, I think the uh, as you look at the construct as we go forward, uh, you know, well, the, the sanctioning body uh, and the IRL will be a separate company, uh, and the other assets will be in the Speedway. And I think with uh, uh, the proper board, and I think you have to ask our competitors uh, uh, at this point, uh, you know, Tony's been a car owner. We were talking about it today. I think Tony has said that uh, all along, you know, Wilbur Shaw, Eddie Rickenbacker have been drivers. So there's, there's been some history. But I don't want to uh, leave this conversation without knowing that I understand the integrity. And there's got to be a bright line. And uh, to me, I know what my job is. And uh, hopefully I've got enough credibility with everyone that we can uh, be sure that that is not a conflict. And uh, I'll do my very best to be sure that isn't. And if, I'm, if you think it is, I hope that I know that uh, you folks will tell me pretty quick. So I've got a lot of guys watching me. Um, and then my, my second question is, um, you have been on record as wanting guaranteed spots for IndyCar regulars in the Indy 500, which is the second question that fans are asking. Is that something that you can now implement? Or what is the process on rule changes going forward? And where do you stand on that? I, I didn't understand the question. Would you repeat it? Yeah. Um, the, the second thing that fans are, quite, are, are quick to question is your position on guaranteed spots in the Indy 500. Now that you run the race and the series, is that something that you will try to implement? Well, that's been a discussion, uh, you know, before, and I think that uh, uh, that will be a strategic discussion uh, that will be taken up. Uh, you know, with the senior leadership here, I wouldn't make a comment today one way or the other. I think it's really up to Mark and Jay and the team uh, to make that decision. I think some of the excitement's been in the past, uh, the fact that uh, we had people that wanted to come into the race. We also have to understand people who commit to the entire season and take this series around the country, around the world potentially. We need to be sure they're taken care of. So I think it's a debate, uh, but at this point, I, I don't, wouldn't comment one way or the other. Let's go to a uh, question from the audience. Russ McQuaid from Fox 59 for Mark. You've been involved with Indy Sports Corp. You've been involved with the Super Bowl. How do you see this change of ownership and this legendary handover at this iconic site in this race affecting Indianapolis Speedway and the overall uh, sports uh, agenda and world here in central Indiana? I, I think the news today has international uh, implications that are very positive, but I think for Hoosiers, people here, it's even, it's even more true. Um, so we were involved in the Super Bowl here. Roger chaired the Super Bowl in Detroit. He understands community and the importance of uh, great corporate citizenship. Um, I, I was talking to Roger a couple nights ago, and he was traveling to raise money for United Way in, uh, in Michigan. So I know him to be a great corporate citizen. I know their company thinks that way. So it's just their mentality, and I think it can only be a really great thing. I think Tony said to have uh, a, a new, fa an additional family uh, as a corporate citizen here in central Indiana. Um, and then to have the resources and the knowledge and the ability to execute that they do 
will mean that this place will continue to grow and the series will continue to grow. And that can only be a good thing for, for the city and the state. Let's go to a call now in line, uh, Jordan uh, Bianchi with The Athletic. Jordan? Uh, yes, this is a two-part question for Roger. Roger, you talked about uh, having a commitment to NASCAR. Uh, can you go specifically into what that means? And will NASCAR continue to have a date there long term? Well, I think you, uh, you look at 27 years, there's no reason to break that string uh, of, of races. Uh, I had a chance to talk to uh, Jim France late last night to tell him that we were going to have this conference here in the morning. And uh, he obviously was excited. We've worked together. We were partners uh, uh, with uh, the ISC at uh, Homestead. Uh, we actually sold our business to them back uh, several years ago. So we have a very close relationship. And certainly, you know, with Jim and with uh, Steve Phelps uh, and Steve O'Donnell and the entire France family, uh, we would expect to take this for many, many years. Uh, they need to run into Indianapolis. We want them to. And there's no question that, uh, you know, we're going to look at opportunities uh, to expand the relationship with them in the future. Rod, one thing you, got, you have talked about that you're in favor of is running a doubleheader weekend, IndyCar and NASCAR having, uh, running on the same track on the same weekend. Is, is Indianapolis now a candidate for that to happen? Well, I think it was interesting to see Newgarden run around the, what they call the Roval, uh, down in Charlotte here you know, several weeks ago, and it was pretty exciting. I think some of the drivers have never seen an IndyCar on, a, on an oval or a racetrack. So, look, those are the things uh, sitting down. Tony will give us some his input, and certainly Mark and the team. Are you know, those things we can do? Can we execute those so we bring value here to the Speedway? And, look, we've got to break some glass on some of these things, don't we? We got to try some of this, and uh, you know I'm prepared to to take a risk. Uh, you know, no risk, no reward in many cases. So those are the things that you know, Mark, with you and your team, that, that we'll take a look at. But uh, I wouldn't say it's out of the uh, out of the possibility. Okay, we're going to take two more questions uh, inside, and then we're going to do two more uh, online. So uh, let's go to the first one here inside. Two more. Go ahead. Roger Jake Query with iHeart Media. Tony had talked about how everyone has their own story here. And I know you know the tradition here is so important to so many people, from the name of the venue to not having lights at the venue to bring it in your own cooler. It goes all the way down the list. How do you balance progress while still being aware of the tradition and the heritage, and how much does that get tweaked moving forward? Well, I think it's uh, important to know that uh, you know, one of the things that I care most about uh, are the men and women in our armed forces and the first responders that. Uh, that we represent and complement every Memorial Day. And then having the July 4th race, think about the two of those. You know, we'll continue to support that with our hearts. And certainly uh, from a tradition perspective, you know, there's nothing more to me gives me more feeling uh, to stand on the grid and see the, the flyovers and see the men and women in the services each year. So I can tell you we're going to push harder on that to be sure we respect them. And the tradition and the pomp and ceremony is certainly would be top of mind. Will you explore night events in terms of racing at this venue? Well, I think we have to look at uh, is the investments uh, in lights or is the investments in something else we can do here to, to make the, the Speedway and the IRL a, a, a going entity which uh, gives us the results we expect. Let's go to uh, Bob Hockgrass from uh, Fox Sports. Bob? Uh, yeah, Roger. I'm it's obviously going to take up a lot of your time. So how much less time do you think you'll be able to devote uh, to your NASCAR team and possibly your IndyCar team? Well, uh, Bob, uh, I don't know if there's many more weekends in 52, but uh, <laughs> if there are, I'll probably fill them up with some racing opportunities. My wife says I tell her that this is my fishing trip and golf game. My golf game is not good these days anyhow. But uh, look, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time at the tracks. Uh, you know, I love it. I want to be there. Uh, and I think that's not a knowledge base for me, too. So, you know, I'll continue. Uh, the good news is that uh, it's a short flight here from Detroit to get to Indianapolis. Uh, uh, we know a lot about it. And I think with the communications capability we have today, uh, 
you know, we can be connected from a business perspective, but from a racing, uh, you know, I'm committed 100% to our team. We've got uh, over 500 people in, down in Mooresville uh, where we have all our teams and uh, with Tim Sendrick as our leader. Uh, you know, I'll be working with him just as I have uh, in the past. Let's go to another question here. And just a reminder, everybody, too, these gentlemen will be available afterwards for uh, questions as well. So one more question here internally in the audience. I had given up. Roger Bob Kravitz with The Athletic. Um, you, you got dropped off here when you were 14 years old, and I, rem I wonder what your memories of that day were like, what you saw, what you heard, what you felt. Well, I'll tell you, it's interesting. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, my dad worked for a metal warehousing company, and uh, they were a lap sponsor. So he got a couple of tickets, and, and we were invited to go to a luncheon. And I remember we got here and we got to the house and everybody had go was gone, but out back was a, if you can believe it, was a show car, uh, you know, front end roadster. And I sat in and got my picture in it. So that was, you know, one of the things that really maybe started, you know, my interest. Then we came out to the track, obviously, and saw the race. Lee Waters won that race in 1951. I think I was uh, here every single time until uh, one of the poorer moves we made is when we split from. Uh, uh, the Speedway and running here for a number of years, but I was think, here every year since then. So to me, uh, uh, that was my first uh, uh, encounter with the Speedway. Before we go to David Mulsher, I want to also let the uh, audience know there will be a photo op at the Yard of Bricks once we complete the interviews up here as well with these three gentlemen, as a, uh, so you all know that. Let's go to uh, David Mulsher now with motorsport.com. Hi guys, congratulations. Um, Mark, I wanted to ask first of all, uh, do you think that uh, Penske, having the Penske uh, Corporation behind this, does that encourage more involvement from uh, be it manufacturers or bigger corporate sponsors who have possibly dealt with uh, Roger in the past and know that you know, he's a guy that gets the job done? We think so. Roger's uh, relationships and reach globally in a number of sectors, many sectors uh, of industry and, and sport are remarkable. Um, some of us have to work really hard to get the right person to pick up the phone. Roger may short circuit that a little bit, uh, in, in, in not infrequently. So yeah, I, I, I believe uh, Roger will answer our call and, uh, and have his own uh, thoughts about um, all parts of how to grow this, but as he already mentioned, having a third OEM is one of our priorities and one of our goals, and I'm sure Team Penske and Roger will help. So uh, thank you again, gentlemen. Thank you to the media that's come here today and also those uh, online. It's a, uh, you know, we are so honored, Tony, to be in your house with your family here today. Uh, we're so proud to partner with you, Mark, and your team. Um, I know it's a proud day for Roger and his family personally. Uh, but it's also a proud day for our 64,000 employees at Penske Corp who are online now watching this live. We're behind you all the way. We're here to support you. We're here to build the momentum you talked about earlier. So thank you very much for a great day.